Welcome to 3ABN Family Worship. We thank you for spending a little of the opening of the Sabbath hours. And should you be watching this on a Saturday evening, then the beginning of a brand new week. But we thank you as we welcome you into our house. Mm -hmm. And uh, you join us for a very fine worship experience. Uh, Irma, we've got the, the guests with us today, do we not? Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> and we praise the Lord for that. We want to go right into introducing uh, the family worship members who are here. And we've actually been in the homes of all of these people for family mm. worship uh, at one time or another. another. And uh, right. we haven't been to Jason's apartment yet, though. No. But, uh, yeah, we are waiting. Uh, but you guys are welcome to come over and bring some food. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true bachelor. We will start with Lynette and Jorge Hake. Good to have you guys here. Good to be here as usual. Indeed, good to see you, as always. And we were at your house just a few days ago. Yes. And he yes. always has good food at his house. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Or he yes. Has, Come on yes. over. Or he has skills in the kitchen. He does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Some, 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 some yes. skills. Yes. Yeah. And what we he go, likes. We've gone through Lynette some has. good rice. We, we have guacamole. We have. Ooh. Yeah. Other oh, things. Kind of goodies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Booties. Mm. And then, of course, my wife is a internationally known cook. Absolutely. Known on at least two continents. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and two countries here in Panama, at yeah, least. At least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and Jason is a good cook. Yeah, Jason likes to cook. Yeah, he's, he's a very good cook. Yeah, I can do a very little very something good. in the kitchen. Yes. And we yeah. have Senia Capote on the piano, and we've had food at her house, too. And she has one of my favorite dishes, which I'm not going to mention, and neither are you. <laughs> uh, and she's a very good cook, also. Uh, so. Um, mm -hmm. This is a good family worship, and we're going to make ourselves hungry if we keep talking about food. Mm -hmm. So we should probably get to our song. Um, if you want to join us for the music, it's 608 in the Adventist hymn hymnal. It's Faith is the Victory. We're going to sing all three stanzas, mm -hmm. and then we're going to ask uh, Sene to come and join us for our discussion. And today we're going to look at um, developing good habits. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about good habits, and if time allows, we're going to talk about um, the records of God and the record keeping of, of the Lord. So we'll see how our time goes. We may have to save the record keeping for another program. But uh, again, thank you for joining us for Family Worship. It's always a, a good time when we come together for worship. So, Sanya, if you will.
shall know his name confess in him. Then onward from the hills of life, our hearts with love aflame will vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. victory that overcomes the world. Um, while Sandy is making her way back over, um, Jason, would you lead us in prayer and then we'll go right into our reading and our study. Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to study your word, to come together and have uh, devotion together. We ask that you would please um, fill this place with your Holy Spirit, that you would lead and guide us into all truth. And be with all those that are watching at home, Lord. Fill their homes with your spirit and lead and guide them into all truth as well. Thank you for hearing this prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our study today comes from a reading that was uh, part of this year's uh, Morning Watch book. And this is something that uh, Irma and I read. Um, we try to get to it every day unless we get up really, really late and have to run, then we have to do it in the evening. But um, we, we try to go into the, uh, the Morning Watch every day. It is written and addressed particularly to youth, but um, you will find, and we found, that it has information and encouragement <laughs> for young and old alike. Mm -hmm. uh, the subject is developing good habits. It's under the heading of the section called Consecration and Christian Experience. The Bible text is Psalms chapter 119, verses, verse rather, 101. I have reframed my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Uh, I'm going to read it and then we're going to spend a little time responding to this because this has a lot of, of meat in, yeah. in this particular mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. section. It says, we are nearing the end of time, and to that we can all say amen. Mm -hmm. yes. And we want now not to meet the world's tastes and practices, but to meet the mind of God, to see what saith the scriptures, and then to walk according to the light which God has given us. So to see and then walk in that light. The youth are forming habits which will, in nine cases out of ten, decide their future the influence of the company they keep, the associations they form, the principles they adopt will be carried with them through life. We shall be individually for time and eternity what our habits make us, the lives of those who form right habits and are faithful in the performance of every duty will be as shining lights shedding bright beams upon the pathway of others. There is no need of being spiritual dwarfs in the if the mind is continually exercised in spiritual things. But merely praying for this and about this will not meet the necessities of the case. So a lot of people are praying for stuff and about stuff, yeah. but not putting their, <laughs> their, their heart in it. You must habituate the mind. Uh, to concentration upon spiritual things. Exercise will bring strength. Many professed Christians are in a fair way uh, to lose both worlds. To be half a Christian and half a worldly man makes you about one hundredth a part Christian mm -hmm. and all the rest worldly. That's, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. That, that mm -hmm. sort of caught my mind. Mm -hmm. You think you're half and half, but really you're mm -hmm. way over on the world mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. and not near Christ at all. The mind must be educated and disciplined to love purity. A love for spiritual things should be encouraged, yea, must be encouraged, if you would grow in grace and in the knowledge of truth. We, I'm sorry, the will must be exercised in the right direction. I will be a wholehearted Christian. I will know the length and breadth, the height and depth of perfect love. Listen to the words of Jesus. Blessed are they 
which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5, 6. Ample provision, I like this, ample provisions are made by Christ to satisfy the soul that hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Mm. Um, I want to start off by just taking a look at a couple of things that sort of jumped out at me. Ellen White says, and I've, I've done this study many, many times, about the correct use of the will. Um, there are those who say you just give yourself over to Jesus, but there must be, my understanding says, a, a deciding to be like Christ, mm -hmm. you know, a, a, a decision of the will. I'm not I'm going to use what will I have to surrender to Jesus. That's right. Now here's the thing I always taught my churches. To, to use the will to not do something mm -hmm. is a wrong use of the will. It's, it's negative. It, if, um, say I'm saying I don't want to think about Irma. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to think about not thinking about Irma. Mm -hmm. So I am in effect thinking, thinking about, about Irma, Irma. <laughs> mm -hmm. because that's the wrong use of the will. If Irma tempts mm -hmm. me, well, praise the Lord. But, <laughs> if, if, <laughs> but my, 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 my point is, to, to use the will to not do something is the correct, is the incorrect use of the will. What I've got to use my willpower is to keep Jesus in my heart and Jesus in my mind. Mm -hmm. So I've got to replace this with something else. Mm -hmm. you, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I'm thinking about not thinking about Irma, I'm thinking about Irma. What I need to do is concentrate on Christ. And Christ gives me the will not to think about Irma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it's, it's like identif when you identify with something, mm -hmm. with a belief, with a person, right? Or with a, an organization, you are, that's, I think that like applies to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So um, my identification is with Christ. Right. I would ident yes. and identify with him. I want mm -hmm. people who, who sees me, they see, my identification right away. Mm -hmm. And so if I think more and more about my wife in this case, or Christ, or, or uh, any belief, that's what I'm gonna be, I become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. super important in our Christian life because otherwise we'll become nothing. Mm -hmm. Identity is everything. Someone said to me the other day, and, and I, I don't wanna dominate conversation, but it's, it's occurred to me, they said, I know that you can stop, I don't remember if it was drinking or smoking, because I did. I was a drinker, I was a smoker, and then I just stopped. I just said, I'm not doing it anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and Ellen White tells us in the history of Joseph Bates, Joseph Bates was like that. He was a drinker, a smoker, a rough sea captain. He decided one day, you know what, I'm done with cigarettes. So he stopped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then he said, okay, I'm not gonna smoke pipes anymore. And so he stopped. I'm not gonna do alcohol anymore. So he stopped. He just, on force of will, he stopped. Most people aren't, aren't that right. good, don't, don't have that, you know, <laughs> who can just say, I'm done with that, yeah. and they're just done. Mm -hmm. So the, 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 most people have to say, I'm gonna have to concentrate on Jesus and let Jesus help me stop smoking. Mm -hmm. Let Jesus help me stop drinking. Because if you're sitting there thinking about that, that, that glass of wine, okay, today I'm not gonna think about that wine. Right, yeah. <laughs> like you're looking at it. Right, yeah. yeah. You're not gonna, what, 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 what you have to say is today I'm going to concentrate on Jesus yeah. and let Jesus help yeah. me stop. You, the will has to come in, but to use the will to do negative stuff is not is right. the wrong use of the will, I, I feel. The more, the more you try to avoid it, the more you think about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's like when somebody tells you not to do something, you're yes. thinking about, oh, I'm going to do it now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it goes. very interesting. This morning, um, my daughter sent me a devotional that she was reading, and I forgot to bring it. Mm -hmm. But the gist was of that, um, he says, and it has a lot to do with this condition as to I want to do something and I don't do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. uh, because it says, we grow in Christ when we take the time to meditate on Him. Mm -hmm. An hour at least, a minimum an hour a day. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that we are hanging around with other Christian people doesn't give us the strength to do these things. True. Mm -hmm. So we could be in church trying to quit smoking and just because we're there, it's not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. We need to have that relationship, that prayer season, mm -hmm. you know, the season of prayer, I'm sorry, <laughs> that, that will lead you to, 
to have the strength to do these things, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the, the will, they give you the will because without the will, you're not going to do it. Mm. Will power comes from God. Mm. It's not just yours. Mm -hmm. So it's not just hanging around with the right people, uh, looking at the right movies or listening to the right music. That's not enough. Mm. You need that connection with God, that devotion <laughs> time yeah. alone with God. And, and yes. I, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, I think what your daughter was referring probably mm -hmm. is a, a, there is a, a quote from Ellen White from uh, Desire of Ages. It says it will do us well to meditate uh, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. one hour a day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, um, especially in the, in the final mm -hmm. events of his life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We do that, that, our life will be completely changed. There's some people says, um, that if you dedicate one hour a day to study any, any discipline, any um, uh, career, let's say you want to become a, a lawyer, in five years you can be the best lawyer, the best in any field if you dedicate just one hour a day. Mm -hmm. So that's going mm -hmm. back to what you're saying. Yeah, so if you want to be a strong Christian, give him at least one hour a day in order to build some spiritual muscles. Mm -hmm. I'm glad, I'm sorry, Boo. Mm -hmm. go ahead. Mm -hmm. You're glad, I'm mm -hmm. glad you're glad. <laughs> <laughs> totally dead, <dedicated. laughs> uh, <clears throat> I wanted to say that this past week, uh, something about habits, how, you know, it talks about not just the youth, but the adults also. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes we want to change things in our lives. And, and it's still, you know, even experts have said that if you take certain amount of days, you will actually forget that habit and you'll get a new habit and mm -hmm. uh, something more positive in your life. And, but last week I was, uh, sometimes th there is some music that I like to listen sometimes, but there is, I found that I, cannot do it all the time. I, I'd rather not listen too much to the music because it stays in my mind. Mm -hmm. And last week I had, um, I listened to this one song. And it was, it's an old song. It was not nothing that has really bad things, but it was a thing that it just kept on my mind. The first thing. <laughs> and uh, yes, I, I, it, whatever I was, even when I was praying, <laughs> this song was coming into my mind. And uh, so I, I said, oh, Lord, take this away from me. You know, this is, but I found that every time it came into my mind, I start singing a Christian song. And in about five, six days, then I realized that it was gone. Mm. So instead of, uh, like you said, concentrating of not, not, I'm not gonna listen to it, I'm not going to, I, every time it came to my mind, I will sing a song uh, that, you know, <laughs> praises to God about it. And, and it finally went away. But habits are so, uh, very easy to, especially bad habits, mm -hmm. <laughs> are very easy to creep in our lives. That, mm -hmm. uh, that falls uh, under something that I've been hearing over and over lately, which is you cannot serve two masters. Mm -hmm. you, you, you'll hate the one and love the other. And, and it's, it's just, popping up all over my life. Yeah. And it's like, see, <laughs> see, you can't serve two masters. You really need to change these mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And it, it's uncomfortable, but it's, mm -hmm. I'm praising the Lord that he's loving me enough to say, hey, take care of this now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, the Bible says, uh, by beholding, we become changed. So mm -hmm. it becomes a slippery slope. If you're just listening to bad music, if you're watching bad movies, if you're hanging around yeah. friends that have bad habits and do, you know, things that they shouldn't be doing, Event, you're going to change one way or the other. You know, um, everybody has an influence. Everybody exerts an influence, whether it be positive or negative. Um, so if you're around negativity all day, you're going to mm -hmm. put out negativity. Mm -hmm. If you're taking in negative things constantly, that's what's going to come out. It's just like your body, like if you're consuming junk food all the time, mm. junk's going to come out. It's <laughs> going to wear you down. So unless you're filling your mind with the Word of God, unless you're spending time built, developing a relationship with Christ, unless you're spending time in church, unless you're spending time with people who are heavenly minded, then things are going to 
most likely move in, in that wrong direction. Um, you know, they also say that if you want to be successful, if you want to be a successful individual, um, you spend time with people who are more successful than you are. You know, you don't spend time with people who are five steps behind you <laughs> to get ten steps ahead, yeah. you know. I mean, you, you spend time with people who are doing something that in an area where you want to go. Mm. If you want to make it to heaven, you got to spend time learning about Christ. Mm -hmm. You have to spend time, you know, with with a Pastor Murray or something too, <laughs> <laughs> that can, you know, who's who's spiritual, uh, who's a spiritual individual, um, and is going to point you in that direction too. You know, he's not going to lead you to to the bar or anything like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know I, I, this idea, and, and Celia mentioned it before. She said it's not just the company you keep, mm -hmm. it, and it's not just the company you keep, but that's part of the equation, you know. Um, it, it says here in the meeting, the influence of the company they keep, the associations they form, talking about young people, the principles they adopt will be carried with them through life. The, the selection of friends and people that you, I mean, your, your, your close buddies, you know. Um, we all have a tight sphere of, sphere of influence. Then there's a, lot, a wider circle. But those who you spend a lot of time with ought to be people who can, who can lift you up. And no more important decision mm -hmm. than the person that you're going to spend your life with. Mm -hmm. You know, that right. is, all of us, well, we got one married, two married, three married, and then we got Jason looking I'm to get okay. married. You know, oh, that's <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> I, I think we will all agree there's no more important decision than who you marry. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that yeah. can make you or <laughs> or break you, you know, um, and you want someone who, and they don't have to be a clone of you. In fact, Ellen White mm. kind of works against that, that you don't want the person to totally lose their character in yours. You mm. want the person to be an individual, but you ought to be pulling the same way, you know, pulling on the same team. And uh, equally yoked. Working together, sure, mm -hmm. uh, and moving towards, towards the Lord. And of course, there's no substitute for individual time with the Lord. I can't draft on Irma's spirituality she cannot draft on mine. Jorge, you can't draft. You, you, you want to create a, a spiritual atmosphere around you, but there's no substitute for one-on-one -on -one with God. Mm -hmm. You can't get away from character it. is not transferable. No, you can't transfer <laughs> character. No. <laughs> it says here that we are our habits. Our habits make mm -hmm. us who we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we yes. have to think about <laughs> that because yeah. if we want to be in heaven, we need to be acting like you were there. Mm -hmm. yes. Otherwise, we're not going to fit in. <laughs> Another, in mm -hmm. oh, go, go ahead. No, go on. Another interesting saying that I've heard before is you show me five of your closest friends and I can show you who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. <laughs> if you're hanging around drug dealers all day, <laughs> more than likely you're probably either yeah. using drugs yeah. or you're you selling you? it. You know what I mean? Mm. Either either one. So, or if you hang around um, uh, spiritual people all day, mm -hmm. more than likely you probably love the Lord too. You know, it's, it's one of those things. And, and, and the, the, the Word of God gives us so many counselings mm -hmm. on, on how to live and, and uh, also that we have to fight the good faith. In mm -hmm. right. um, Allah was reading recently in, uh, the, the, the letters of Paul to Timothy and Timothy was this young man and, uh, and obviously was a Christian and, but Paul was giving him a lot of counsel and a lot of uh, 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 encouragement and, and he was telling to him, you got to keep in this line, you got to keep, you know, now how do you, a young man keeps in, in in following what God wants, where God wants him to go, uh, the, the, it has to exercise the will. Mm -hmm. You want to will. You cannot help anybody that doesn't want to doesn't mm -hmm. want to, to, to be helped, mm -hmm. because you have to want to, and that's the will, mm -hmm. the will that that God uh, wants to put in us if we don't have it. He, he wants to put us the will to do His will. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where, you know, mm -hmm. Sister White has uh, 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 encouraged us to, to ask God to give us His will, mm -hmm. to replace it with His will. Uh, the, uh, it's interesting, the, the book of Psalms 
the first psalm says something that's very interesting. It's exactly what we're talking about. And psalm, <coughs> psalm number one, the uh, verse one and two says, blessed is the one who does not walk. Some version says, blessed is the man, but mm -hmm. blessed is the one mm -hmm. um, who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or, uh, or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord mm -hmm. and who meditates on his law day and night. night. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a habit for that person mm -hmm. to walk the walk mm -hmm. and not just talk the talk because it's, that, that's very easy mm -hmm. too. <laughs> so you, yes. We can, oh. we, we sometimes are, we're very good uh, Christians at, at, at do the talk uh -huh. and, and, and we become sometimes professionals of the, the theory, but when it comes to <laughs> put it into practice, it's a different different story. Very, very it says true. here, merely praying for this is, is not does not meet the necessities of the case. That's just what you I was must just have it to yes. the mind, to concentration upon spiritual things. Yeah, I just put a little dot mm -hmm. there, but merely praying. Well, I'm praying, I'm praying, I'm praying about it, I'm praying about it. Um, but I think that the, the question is what happens after you finish praying? Yeah. Once you say amen, then what do you do mm -hmm. to, to sort of buttress it's your prayer? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, you can't just, <laughs> it's like you saying, well, I want some money in my bank account. Yeah. I really want some money in my bank account. Yeah. You don't go to work. But I'm not going to work today. You know? I'm not going to go get a job. I, I, I want some money. I yeah. want some money. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to get up and do. We're to be co-laborers with God, mm -hmm. not just, yeah. God's yeah. not exactly. a genie. You yeah, know. I think I think we are too used to, uh, and, and the Christians are used to separate um, ar the action mm -hmm. with it from the desire to obtain something through mm -hmm. actions. Yes. it's like the action, like, like the act of getting things done, is not godly. It's like many people will say it's lack of faith. Mm -hmm. Have to mm -hmm. yes. If, if you want something, let God do it for you. Mm -hmm. but, but it's not it's, like, yeah. it's no. just what you're saying. If you want something, you mm. gotta work for it. It's, yeah. not, it's nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Ellen White says in the, in the prayer book, and I'm definitely paraphrasing this, is, is something along the lines that like when you pray, pray as though it were. Like you, mm -hmm. you pray, if you're praying for deliverance, believe that you've been delivered mm. when you when you say amen believe that you've been delivered you know without faith it's impossible to please god you have to have faith if you're asking for something that is within god's will he's going to he's going to grant that you know if you're asking for something that is in accordance mm -hmm. to his will he's mm -hmm. he's not going to withhold any good thing um, from those that serve him as long as it's in accordance to his will Fair yes victory amen the story that this man wanted to quit drinking. So he would go and they would pray over him at church and to help him quit drinking. Then he would go home, and but he wouldn't throw the, the liquor out, you know? Uh -huh. So why are you not? This is, well, I might need it someday. So, <laughs> where was his faith, you know? He really hadn't given it up. Mm -hmm. Somehow he expected God to yeah. Well, we do we do that all the time. Exactly. Yes. And it is, it, it's a, that example is is so uh, is repeated in our lives constantly. Mm -hmm. We want to do something, and we go back to the same thing because because back in in our mind. I have it. We, we had it from it. before. Mm -hmm. I want to keep it there because I may go back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sometime. Yeah, that's why the Bible says, make no provision for the flesh, mm -hmm. you know. I'm going to keep that cigarette there just in case, mm -hmm. you know. And if, it, if it's there, you're going to smoke it, yep. you know. As long as it's there, you're going to smoke it. Um, I was looking at Romans 14, 23. Um, but he who doubts is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith. This is eating and this is a whole thing that's in the book of Romans. But the, the, the part that I really want is the last part. For whatever is not from faith is sin. So you've got to start out with, with, with faith. And even if, you, even if you, by force of will, stop doing something, um, you get no credit for it because that, that action is as filthy rags. It has to be done through Christ and surrendered to Christ. Um, 
you know, if, we, if anybody who could, could do, if you, if you could just become sinless without Christ, then Christ's death is unnecessary. Mm -hmm. So your mm -hmm. victories must be gained through Christ, and every victory that is not gained through Christ is not really a victory mm -hmm. because it's not surrendered to Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not under the blood of Christ. It's just, it's like, it's, it's, what's it, it's, it's, it's not change of heart, it's, it's cosmetology. You know, putting powder on your face and mm -hmm. making yourself mm -hmm. look nice, but it's not inside the Bible says you're full of dead right. bones. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's cosmetology. It's, it's not the it's, real thing. Yeah, it's covering up the real thing. Your it's, heart. It's, yeah. it's basically yeah. a behavioral modification yeah. instead of a genuine, yeah. genuine yeah. transformation. Yes, yeah. yeah. very good. It's interesting about the cosmetology that you're talking about. <laughs> I, when I was working in, in, in real estate for many, uh, many times there's such, uh, when this person is trying to sell a house and they brush clean it here, brush it up. Yes. And when the, the appraiser comes and says, no, your house is valued this much, well, but I did all this, and they will tell you, that's a cosmetic yeah. uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. addition. Mm -hmm. Cosmetic, yeah. you need just it's, a, cosmetic. it's just cosmetic. Mm -hmm. It doesn't add to the value. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I had a new bathroom. <coughs> Any, all house has bathrooms, <laughs> he didn't do any, anything. <laughs> now, when somebody says, I built a new driveway with a nice fence around, that's different. Mm -hmm. Because now I am make, an, an, doing, making an addition to the safe for the house, the uh, convenience, etc. But doing what every day is, 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 is an everyday thing, like, uh, like just painting, painting just here paint and there, yeah. it doesn't make mm -hmm. any, any difference. Mm -hmm. It's what, uh, like you just said, I mean, yeah. the change has to be substantial, something that you really... <laughs> yeah, so like rust -oleum. you're painting over rust, <laughs> but there's still rust under there. You you know? Know? <laughs> Have structural damage, foundation issues. <laughs> you said something, Jason, that touched me. You said, God is not a genie. Mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. I, and I used to say to Irma and I, we used to talk that, that prayer is not a talisman. And, and, <laughs> yes. and when you say God is not a genie, some people just expect, let me just pray and God will just pull it out of the hat. You mm -hmm. know, um, I don't have to do anything for him, but he's got to do stuff for me. Mm -hmm. um, and a talisman is something that people wear, some kind of amulet that's supposed to ward off evil. Mm -hmm. So we think if I just pray, it's a talisman. It'll be just Everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not that simple and it's not that, that trite, you know. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord demands a certain amount of dedication to Him. It is interesting mm -hmm. that when we need God, we want His full, undivided attention. Mm -hmm. um, but she's saying here that some of us have developed habits where we give God so much and we don't give the world so much and mm -hmm. we think we're, well, God's getting half. Well, really, He's not. Mm -hmm. He's getting 1% mm -hmm. and you're giving the world <laughs> 99.9 mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so um, if we're going to grow in him, uh, we've got to give him the time. There's no shortcut to, um, to faith, and nobody gets a scholarship on faith. Everybody will have to exercise yeah. faith. Nobody gets a pass. Everybody's going to have to do that, exercise faith. Plus, that's a miserable life. I mean, living one foot in, one foot out, you're not enjoying the best no. of either one. You're mm -hmm. not, well, you're not exactly. sinning to the, <laughs> to the <laughs> negative potential of sin. Yes. <laughs> and you're not living up to all the blessings that God wants to bestow upon you, but you're blocking them because you got one foot in the world, one foot in. <laughs> that it reminds me where a certain time in my life that uh, uh, I was living in a certain way, and, but I couldn't enjoy it. And it seems like every morning I was like, oh, you know, why did I do that? <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and one time I remember I just got so upset and I said, Lord, why can't you just let me have fun for one time? <laughs> like, like I said. And uh, well, the Lord will never. And, and, and thank God for that mm. because we don't know ourselves. We don't know that uh, uh, when we get in to do certain things, we might get just, it says, really stuck in there. And then it's so much difficult for God to get us out of there because then our will is very weak mm -hmm. uh, to follow Christ. And uh, so it, it is, it's just what you said. Uh, you cannot. You cannot live one foot there and one yeah. foot here. The Bible says it. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Got us a one way, yeah. one yeah. all the way. Mm 
Mm -hmm. to Christ. Yeah. And a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. The line here, um, this piece of what you're talking about, Irma, many professed Christians are in a fair way to lose both, both worlds. worlds. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be miserable here mm -hmm. and then miss heaven too. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's kind of sad. <laughs> you know? yes. You're not having any fun here because you're trying to carry passports in two <laughs> in two in two worlds, and um, mm -hmm. and then you don't make it to heaven either because you're half stepping. Yeah. You got to give him. You got to give him all and develop those habits that will mitigate in favor of that. Mm -hmm. On that same note, you know there there are some people that are your holier than thou Christians or Pharisees, if you will, mm -hmm. that will say, point out everything that you're, that they think that you're doing wrong or that you should be convicted on mm -hmm. because they're convicted on, you know, this, that, and the third that may not even be a salvational issue. <laughs> <laughs> and then they do it in, in a manner that's not even loving, you know, and wonder why people don't, you have somebody who's, who doesn't know the Lord, who's trying to get to know the Lord, and they're trying to take the place of the Holy Spirit with that conviction thing like well why is he wearing this to church why is he why is he dressed like that and you're not even introducing them to Christ at all you're just worried about the outward appearance at, at the moment mm -hmm. um, you know that same person how this is saying one foot in one foot out you're you're running the risk of, of missing out or losing both worlds mm. by not having the love of Christ if you just have the law or you just have you know all these guidelines or whatever, you you run the risk of missing out mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. that's it's it's sad to see people lack one of the one of the most important things, which is Christ's love too. Mm -hmm. yes. people don't respond very well when you push the issues on mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. because it has to come from the Holy Spirit has to convince convict the person to make a change in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so you can point it out or, or you can encourage it or whatever, but until the person makes a decision that and they're convicted of that, that's something they want to follow, they're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. Just like okay. somebody that has a habit, they're not going to ask for help in any way until they realize they, they need to change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I mean, don't get, like God has a standard. We know that, you know, mm -hmm. God definitely has a standard and um, <coughs> he will help us meet his standard. Like he doesn't just leave us say, okay, this is my standard and that's that. You know, if we, we go back to creation and we look at, at creation, how he created man on the sixth day, he had everything that we needed. We just had to, to manage what he provided like mm. where he he creates and sustains yeah. you know so he's not gonna to leave us in in a position where we can't meet what he set forth mm -hmm. yeah sometimes we struggle with things and uh, uh, we don't think we just can't imagine that the Lord can help us to change but uh, he does mm -hmm. and, and if we look at our, our life in the past we can point to many things that we thought we could not give up, mm -hmm. or we could not uh, uh, achieve, and yet we did, but we didn't do it until we surrendered that to the Lord and trusted Him mm -hmm. so but that, another, that He change it. Another thing, I'm sorry, no, uh, another thing that I, uh, in this discussion, I, I think is important to address is that we're not um, I hope this is not heresy, but uh, we're not looking for <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for perfection in the human sense right. of the word, mm -hmm. because perfections and perfectionists sometimes are more in the wrong than a person who is trying to do the right thing. I, I think the perfection and, and before the eyes of God is, is different. God, yes. God sees us the way that we have, the, uh, at the point that we have reached in our, in our Christian experience is perfect for Him. Mm -hmm. If we are sincere and, and, and sincerely looking for, mm -hmm. f to, to meet mm -hmm. whatever He wants us to meet, mm -hmm. that's perfection. Mm -hmm. uh, 
for me, perfection, for instance, and I always uh, have this little example in my mind and help me sometimes. Um, when I was born, my brother was 10 years old. So my brother was 100% my age, right? He has, mm -hmm. I was zero. Mm -hmm. I was just out of my mother's womb and he was 100% my age. But then when he was 20, I was 10, and if you, you were think 50% <laughs> or 50% apart. <of> <laughs> okay, it's not theology, I told you. <laughs> but it helps me to understand how God looked at me. It, it, at, at, at zero, I was perfect. And my brother at 10 was perfect. Obviously, going back now to the discussion, to the spiritual battle and this, I want to spiritual um, uh, life, we get to the point that we uh, reach certain degree of perfection, but it's not the perfection that the, the world sees. Mm -hmm. and you have to be perfect mm -hmm. in every way. <laughs> then you are good. Mm -hmm. No, God look at perfection in a different, from a different perspective, and that's what I think we need to focus on. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're, we're too harsh on people, says, mm -hmm. oh, like you were saying, uh, if you don't dress like this or do this yeah. and that and, and keep this and that, the people haven't reached to that point yet, mm -hmm. but they're still perfect and mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know that's what. Right. That's great. And that's I it. mean, and imagine if God just put everything on us at once. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go be the oh, perfect yeah, Christian. Do, yeah. You know, just everything. You know how overwhelming that would be? Pastor Murray, when you met Miss Irma here, did you just automatically do everything that she liked? Did you just, was it a habit to do everything that she liked? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I got an extra bedroom at my house. That's wrong. <laughs> well, I gave, it, I gave it a try. I surely did. I, I, I surely did. Um, you did. Still trying. But you had to know what she liked first. Yes. Precisely, right. You to to so you first. have to be introduced. The same way people have to be introduced to Christ. Yes. To know what things he likes, mm -hmm. to know, mm -hmm. you know, what things he's looking for. <coughs> you know, you have to develop and cultivate that relationship. Mm -hmm. right? But, <laughs> yeah. you know, you don't just automatically come. And, and as humans, I think sometimes we can be so harsh on people coming into the church, expecting them to do everything perfectly mm -hmm. as, as they're coming in. And, the and we're not showing, yeah, yeah, we're not showing the love of Christ to them, and and bringing them in and introducing them mm -hmm. to Jesus. Mm. Well, David is the perfect example when when he was going to face the the, the, the Goliath, the King Saul, put in all his armor because that will make him a perfect soldier. Mm. Mm -hmm. He had everything he needed, right? Yeah. Mm. What David did. <laughs> There's no walk, way I'm going to walk with it. It's absurd. I don't. Please. I'd rather just go the way I am and put my little sling. Little sling. sling. Yeah. And, and, and around and around and around. And that, that you know, the rest of the story. But, yeah. but you know, I, I, I think that it gives us an example how God looked at us. Mm -hmm. An, an imperfect, imperfect person and make it perfect because of his grace. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, it, and we sort of slipped into this a little bit, but that's the whole justification, sanctification process. Christ mm -hmm. calls us to be perfect. Mm -hmm. He gives us through his, the power of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of angels, the ability to move into perfection, to, to be perfecting. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, through the justification process, he sees us as perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a really great thing. So that if I come to the Lord today uh, in sincerity and die tomorrow, I've been justified and saved. And there may be another person who's been in the church 40 years. Uh, he's had a longer time with Jesus, but Christ sees me in my baby perfect state as he does that long time person in their perfect state because of the justification process. Now, obviously, um, that person who's been in the church longer has fought more battles and, and is further along than I am. Mm -hmm. But through justification, I get the same heaven that person mm -hmm. does. I get the same reward as that person does. Uh, you know the story in Matthew, if one comes in the morning at, uh, 
at, at 6 o'clock, one comes at 11 o'clock, one yes. comes at 11 o'clock just they before. Get, they they all get paid the same. the same penny. You know, yeah. everybody's the same. And that's through justification. Yeah. That's right. Because Christ says, when you come to me, I accept you and view you as a completed work mm -hmm. while I'm making you a completed work. Whether it's three hours on the cross next to Jesus or a lifetime, you still get the same penny. And that's, that's the, the, the goodness of a God that we serve, that right. he allows that to happen in our lives. Uh, right, but in, in the same parable, you see the, 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 the other side, the, the man side, when they complain, it says, hey, <laughs> but I, I, I right. work for you. this thing all day, so, right, yeah. So <laughs> that, that, that's the, right. the, the human perspective. Mm -hmm. I did everything right. Hey, I deserve. I deserve more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I deserve more. Uh, yeah. That's like the, the prodigal son yeah. brother, you know. Mm -hmm. I was here, I didn't go anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, me, me, me. Yeah, I never got a party. <laughs> 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 you know, it, it occurs to me that people who, who say themselves say they are perfectionists. I don't know if I've ever met a happy perfectionist. Mm -hmm. They're always, they're always no. mad, you know, <laughs> like, I think nobody can meet my it's standards. Fine. You know, and, and, and I said this term was I think a person who says I'm a perfectionist is just egotistical enough to think that they know what perfection is. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, to, to say that you know what perfection is is a very egotistical statement. Um, most people are, who are perfectionists just say, are saying, really, I want it the way I want it. And when it meets my, goal, my standards, then it is perfection. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you know that? That's just what you like. That don't mean it's perfect. That's, that's what you like. You know, I may like it over here. Well, no, I like it. This is perfect right there. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> well, for you, <laughs> for me, over here is perfect, you know. <laughs> so we can get into, you know, my idea of perfection your idea of perfection, yeah. yet Christ defines what perfection is, and it's perfect love, perfect love mm -hmm. for Jesus that results in a changed life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he yeah. says that you can do all of these things very well done, but if you don't have love, yeah. 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 you have done like nothing. A, you're making noise. Making noise. Making noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you you're making yes. noise. Yeah, God's way is truly the standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> The mind must be educated and disciplined mm, to love to purity. Yeah. You know, um, and, and that includes a lot of things that we watch on TV and a lot of things that we do. Um, a love for spiritual things should be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Yea, must be encouraged if we would grow in grace and in the knowledge of the truth. You've got two uh, at home. Sebastian is? He's nine. He's nine, and Noelia is? Is 12. Is 12. Is 12. Mm -hmm. um, lovely children, um, not angels, because there are no angels, <laughs> but pretty, pretty good, pretty close to angels, really, Reasonable really good. Children. <laughs> <laughs> but well, you, you have to encourage them mm -hmm. in the right way. You've got, you've got to direct them. them. You've, got to, you've got to educate them. them. Sure. Yes. Train mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yours has grown now in teaching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure there were times when you had to, you had to try to, they have wills, and you got to yes. try to correct that little, yes. you know, you got to kind of bend it so that it, it's following Jesus. That, that's, yes. that comes with, with, with parenting. Uh, actually, I, I not, uh, not to contradict what you said, we have four at home. But, but the, no, to continue with the compar com comparison, mm -hmm. two needs probably a lot more you know, they need full-time hands-on. Full yeah. And the other two are grown up, so <laughs> they, we pray for them. Yeah. We pray for them. That's all right. They will sometimes stress us more than the little ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because now you can't be that net, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. trying to, mm -hmm. to educate them. They, they make their own decisions. Mm -hmm. You just yes. pray that the Lord you know, will guide them. When I was in California this last time that I was visiting, and uh, Asher got mm -hmm. baptized. They got Visiting so, the, the grants. The grants. Yeah, the, right, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the grants. Visiting the grants. Yeah. And then the kids, too. And the kids, you know, too. And, yeah. And their spouses. But uh, uh, he got baptized. And so afterward, he says to me, he says, Oh, he says, that made me cry. He <laughs> says, that's what he was doing. But Jill had been there to do uh, a seminar. Or, uh, Marconi? Uh, yes, Jill Marconi. And uh, so she asked everybody if they would write something that they want God to change in their lives. So Asher, <laughs> he wrote, he was sitting next to me and he wrote and he just kind of giggled and he looked at me. <laughs> he giggles and he wrote and I said, oh, I said, why are you giggling? He says, 
I am. I have to ask God. He says to help my, my. Uh, 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 how you say to, uh, kind of my reactions. Mm -hmm. You know my impulses. Uh, uh, impulses. <laughs> See, yes. So I said, really, say. Yeah, she says, I know. He says that I react very fast. <laughs> <laughs> and, but it, and, and he is the calmest and the more, uh, <laughs> you know, easygoing of, of, of all of them. But the other ones, especially the little one, Ian, is so strong and so will. Mm -hmm. And uh, so Asher, sometimes he just is overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. So he just. You know, it's time to you know, <laughs> go against that. Mm -hmm. So, but he recognized that. Now, why do ch we children recognize? Because the parents are guiding them and and and, and, and trying to educate them mm -hmm. how they need to be. Mm -hmm. So, if you don't do that, children will not learn. You know, they'll just mm -hmm. grow like little animals. And he opened so, his so heart to the Lord and, and he, mm -hmm. yeah. the Holy Spirit convicted him that yes. he needed to change there. Mm -hmm. And it's what we do when we hear that voice that makes the difference because if we don't learn to, if we always shut it down and you know, it's like, oh yeah, <coughs> but maybe it wasn't anything. So you keep going. Pretty soon you learn to shut it out altogether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't hear anymore. Mm -hmm. So you That's need right. to learn to hear that voice when you're convicted or something is because God's trying to to point out where you need to change, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to create a new habit. Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that she says the mind must be educated and disciplined mm -hmm. to love purity? One would almost hope and pray that that would be the natural inclination of the mind, but it is not. Mm -hmm. No, you know, it, it is not. You have to discipline yourself. Well, the Bible says continue to continually towards evil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you got to work at yeah. loving purity. And, and even in young people, you've got to teach them uh, to work at and encourage them to, to love people. I don't know, um, not, have, not, have having, not having had uh, natural children, where the balance is. I, I have such great respect, one, for teachers, mm -hmm. educators. Oh, because yeah. first, before, I'd, I've, I've taught, and I, I've taught high school, I've taught college. I can do that. I can't do... Little first kids. grade, second grade, mm -hmm. second grade, okay? Mm -hmm. I can do that. Mm -hmm. um, that's a special gift. Mm -hmm. uh, it is. Because first you've got to get their attention before you can impart knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that whole warden thing, I can't, I don't, I don't do that well. So I have great respect for parents who have the respect of their children as well as their love because there's a balance. You can't be their buddy. Nope. You know, you've got to be their mm -hmm. parent. Mm -hmm. But yeah. by the same term, you can't be their jailer. Yeah. You know, you, you, you got to be their parent. So that balance is a, is a marvelous thing. And, and, and some people, we were, we were saying before, some people are excellent parents. Some parents don't have that skill set, you know, but they have children. So it's a, it's a, it's a great thing to be able to educate your, your children to love purity without holding it over them like a whip. You know, it's, it's a tough thing. And it's hard because you want to protect your children. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says we need to learn to live in the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. So we need to teach them to live in the world that we live, you know, like our neighbors, our friends, mm -hmm. uh, the people around, the, the things that are happening in the world. We need to learn to teach them how to live there. Be in it, but not of it. Exactly, mm. yeah. exactly. Mm. And if we isolate them ourselves mm -hmm. and we create this little cocoon, sooner or later they're going to come out. Mm. Oh, and yeah. they won't know what to do They'll with be it. Totally unprepared. Yeah. Well, and and the things that you don't teach them at home, they're going to learn outside in the street. <laughs> so, do you want them to learn the way from the Bible, or do you want them to learn from the what street? the world has? Yeah, yeah, because they're going to learn. I'll tell you a quick story. Um, years ago, Pastor Wendy Phipps and I were doing a wedding, and we were at the wedding rehearsal, which which is at a big marina. Mm -hmm. on Saturday night where it's going to be Sunday. And this is a gorgeous marina, oh, boats know. bobbing in the water. And uh, I have another pastor uh, friend who had a son who was, and, and Irma knows, mm -hmm. who was the most out of control, unctuous, in your face, <laughs> rude little boy. And he's turned out to be a pretty good adult, but he was just you know beyond he belief. <laughs> you know. uh, just beyond belief. And so the, the wedding planner said, she had a little bell, she said, ding, 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 everybody, all right, your attention, attention, please stop talking. Mm -hmm. We're ready to start the rehearsal. And this little boy said to his mother, Mommy, shut up. 
Didn't you hear the woman say, uh, it's time to be quiet? Shut up, mommy. Now, what? Whitley Phipps wife was there <laughs> and her, her little boy was sitting at attention and she saw her son watching this boy <laughs> and immediately she grabbed her son by the head and she said, now you would never say that to your mommy, would you? He said, no mommy. <laughs> you know, so she, she cut that off before yeah. it ever, you know, if it ever is in entering bed. your brain, we will cut that off now. Yeah. That was a preemptive strike, you know. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. So he said, no, mommy, thing. no, mommy. So she just, she saw, he saw, she saw her boy watching that child. Mm -hmm. And so she got him right away. You just would never, no, mommy, I would never, <laughs> kind of thing. And I told, I told Willie about that and, and, and his wife just the other day. I said, that was, oh, almost 20, 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I saw you <laughs> cut something off before it ever began to bloom, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. And that, 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 that's parenting, you know, teaching your children to love right and to love purity and to respect you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's yeah. a, 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 great, a great thing. Yes. We're coming down to the end. I want to look at this last line. Um, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Ellen White says here, Ample provisions are made by Christ to satisfy the soul that hungers and thirsts for righteousness. Mm -hmm. So if you want righteousness, you can indeed have and will have righteousness. You can be like Christ. If you dedicate your mind, your heart, your talent, and your life to Jesus, and if you want to make heaven your goal, then heaven you shall have if you hunger and thirst for it, for Christ has made ample provision for you to have what you want, for you to have all eternity with Jesus Christ. I want to thank my yes. guests, our guests, Boo, for being with us, Lynette and Jorge, and Jason and Senia. Uh, I always thought that was a beautiful name, Senia. You yes. don't, yeah, when you say it's Senia here, you only get one person saying here. Uh, <laughs> God bless you. We'll be back. We'll see you again. Have a wonderful Sabbath and a wonderful week in Jesus.